uh, Pastor Liz said it best when she said, It is so good to see you. It is so good to see you. It is, it is so good to see you. So it was, it was really great to catch up with colleagues and to sit down and, and to have conversation. So to, to meet new friends as well and to make those new connections was amazing. And for the very first time, I got to sit with Jillian by my side. So we had a good time, um, mom and daughter talking on a different level. Um, I really enjoyed being able to see the adult side of things. Like my mom said, I mostly did, well, I did all the youth events growing up. When you're a youth, you come and you sit in on a couple of sessions in the adult assembly. But I thought it was really cool to be a voice and like sit in on the business proceedings and read and learn and understand that this is also what we do as the ELCA and that this is what makes everything run. I think the thing that surprised me most was the, the tiebreaker ballot between Pastor Kelly and Dr. Phil. You could just feel the hush that came upon the room and then the, the collective gasp that was palpable. I'm really grateful for those who were bold enough to step up to have their names uh, put on the ballot. But this year we made history with uh, two very capable women on the ballot. And I love and admire both of them. And they both have different gifts. Um, so no matter who was chosen, I feel like it would have been a win-win either way. But I think what I'm mostly grateful about is that my daughter finally has somebody in leadership that looks like her and somebody that she can she can emulate. Yes, I feel like I saw God active in everybody that was volunteering for Senate offices, as well as the bishop election and in the youth, um, when the youth spoke up. Our final question comes from the Youth Assembly. Thank you for your care in crafting this question. We noticed that none of the nominees' bios emphasized youth ministry as a priority. How will you prioritize, personally and programmatically, involvement in synodical youth ministry? And that Lily, who was working with the youth, we went through the youth events together. So it was cool to still see that, you know, like these activities that enrich your faith are still working for us and working in us and allowing us to do bigger and better things now that we're older and worship as we all sang, all sang together in collective voices. This is the first time I was able to process with the rostered ministers. And it is a visible sign really that we're all in this together. Um, no, none of us are church, you know, we're not church by ourselves. We are, we are here to, to be the church together, the body of Christ. Very cool to see, again, the business proceedings, but from an adult standpoint, um, it was awesome to me when people stood up and asked questions because, you know, as a good Lutheran, you're supposed to sit in the back pew and just kind of be quiet. <laughs> so it was cool to see uh, Lutherans standing up and doing something and not being afraid of change for, for once. Um, I think the one that really, really got to me and, and to my mama's heart was uh, when Jillian said, yes, I will throw my, my name in the hat for Synod Council. And um, not just as a pastor, but certainly as a mom, I was just completely grateful. This includes the Tidewater and Peninsula conferences. We have no nominees. Are there any micro nominations from the floor? Any other nominations from the floor? Microphone four. Hi, I'm Pastor Suzanne Steerwalt from St. Andrew in Portsmouth, and I would like to nominate Jillian Steerwalt. As I said, I've grown up in the ELCA, and more specifically, the Virginia Synod. And as somebody who's grown up in the ELCA and has had rarely missed a church service until I went off to college, um, I don't like the way that some of the things are going in the ELCA, specifically Virginia Synod, because I feel that the church should be a safe space for everyone because God calls us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Um, and when we use certain tools like equality, 
as marketing and we turn them into kind of devices, we alienate each other. And when we alienate one group, we alienate everybody. I think that everybody should make the time to attend. It, it certainly is worth it. And I know it's expensive and it, it puts a task uh, on the congregation to be able to pay for it. But the collegiality and uh, the business part, learning all about the ELCA and especially the Virginia Senate, it makes it worth it.